This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day. Amen. It is often thought that the fear of death is humankind's primary or ultimate concern. But I'd like to challenge you to explore the notion that the fear of living, truly living, is a concern that plagues humankind. Now, I've spoke before thousands of people, and I was so nervous to be here today with you. But I thank God that this is the day that he's made. She's made, I call God she, him, and they, men. We are all interactive participants in the life cycle, the end of which is death, sadly. It is almost impossible for us to contemplate our non-existence. Our own physical deterioration often provokes intense emotion of sadness, anger, and frustration. And we go to great lengths to slow down and even mask that process. Our liturgy is saturated with fearful images of expressions of fear about coming before God and our inadequacies in doing so. But we should come anyway. This coming week, our Jewish friends and family will celebrate Rosh Hashanah. That commemorates the creation of the world and it marks the beginning of the days of all, a 10-day period of introspection and repentance that culminates in the Yom Kippur holiday, also known as the Day of Atonement. According to Jewish tradition, the time period from Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur is called Yamim Nuraim, the days of all. During these days of all, Jews are encouraged to go on a journey of self-examination and transformation as individuals and as a community. There are indeed tremendous and awesome implications to such a practice. I believe that this type of spiritual assessment is more than merely asking whether our lives are good or bad, which is quite relative, but rather the real question, and one that may invoke fear in us, is are we truly living? We are reminded in the cre creation story found in the book of Genesis that humankind comes alive when God breathes the breath of life into humans. Before this point, human beings have a physical form. They have some sort of existence, but no life. Physical reality is part of being alive, but that alone does not constitute life. It is not enough to merely exist. To be alive is to remember who we are, that our inner essential holds the spark of the divine that determines our way of being in the world and our purpose in the world, that only we, individually and we collectively can fulfill. This reminds me of my favorite movie, the wonderful Christmas classic that comes on every day during Christmas season, It's a Wonderful Life. Some of you probably are too young to remember that movie. Jimmy Stewart plays Ralph, a cynical character hardened by the difficulties of life and he wishes that he were dead. He tells Clarence the angel that he, he wishes he were dead and that he had never been born. So the angel grants his wish and thereby sets 
Ralph up for a mystical journey to view his life as if he had never been born. Ralph is surprised to recognize how his daily life encounters, some of which are trivial, make the difference between good and bad and life and death for his friends and relatives. The movie ends with Ralph running joyfully through the streets of his little town, hugging and kissing his neighbors and calling the names of familiar friends as if they were new. This is a man who now understands the value of life. Upon closer examination, we may discover that we are actually more afraid of living than dying. Think about that for a minute. There are many dimensions to this fear. When Ralph was alive, he wasn't really living at all. He was existing. It wasn't until he realized that he was in fact dead that he wanted to live again. So what is it about living that we have a hard time with? Ironically, it may be the fear that we may not actually be living at all. We may be the walking dead. Why? Because being alive is hard work. It comes with feelings, thoughts, physical pain, hard relationships, and the ups and downs of life. That's why we are challenged to choose life. We are commanded to choose life because living is so hard to do. Women who have experienced childbirth can understand the balance between life and death. We know what it means to want to give up when we have to push past the pain in order for new life to come forth. Can I get any amens here? But also like the pain of childbirth or child loss, sadly, many of us have been traumatized and scarred by our experience in this world because it's not often a safe place. And so we choose to live in such a way that we won't feel hurt or pain or at least not as much. So we hide. We hide from others, and sadly, we hide from ourselves because we are afraid of rejection and failure. In essence, we choose not to live. Life comes with many unanswered questions. What if we reveal our inner selves? What if who we are and need to be is not what other people expect us to be? What if we express reverence or show tenderness and sensitivity? What if we hold on to values that are out of step with mainstream society? What if we risk loving, maybe more than we feel loved? What if we show weakness? What if people know that we are afraid? The reality is that we live in a world that is not safe. Oppression, racism, sexism, and all kinds of isms seek to snuff out our joy for living. We wonder silently if black lives really matter, if it's okay to be proud and to be who we are or to be belong. Our various faith traditions and spiritual sources of meaning knows that life is hard. It is hard, and it serves as a resource and challenges us to be mindful and present despite the fears and the pain and to live a life anyway. Not to do more or to become human doings, which many of us are, but to become more of who we are, human beings, human beings, despite our fears. Marian Williamson notes, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. And consciously, we give other people permission not to live when we don't. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence liberates others. Living requires presence, my presence and yours. Living requires that we listen deeply to the wisdom of our lives and the lives of others as we try to navigate this hilly terrain of life together. The late great Bishop Tutu reminds us in the concept of Ubuntu that our humanity is inextricably linked to each other. I matter 
because you matter. I can only live when you live. So I beseech you today in the spirit of Sankofa, when I first uh, came here, I encouraged you on the first day of classes to go back and get it. If many of you wondered and thought about what the it is, or did you not even think about that? Going back and get it is going back and picking up the fragments and the pieces of yourself that you have left behind. That is what inclusion is about bringing all of yourself to this space. Remember who you are. Go get the pieces that you left behind. Not only what you do or how you can do it better, but how you will choose to do what awakens your souls. We are made better when you show up in all of who you are. So I encourage you today to live your life fully and think about what you bring to this community. Choose life and your soul will live. Today is that day, not tomorrow. Today is the day, even amidst the rain, even amidst a lots of homework and challenges, today is that day. Rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you.